So we're hit guys, and inadvertently kind of the whole rest of the industry is now latched onto high intensity in some form or fashion as maybe defined differently than we would use it, but they're definitely calling it that. Rather than, than trying to find out, you know, how little can they work, they're trying to, and then now the pendulum has swung totally in the opposite direction. How much hard work can we do? Not just work, but how much really ridiculous hard work, the CrossFit, the Insanities, these, these things. Um, why do you think all of a sudden work, hard work is in vogue? I mean, this is just this is kind of brain sort of thinking out loud. Why all of a sudden, those of us who've been attempting to just work really, really hard for a really long time, now all of a sudden everybody else wants to work really, really hard too, even if they're defining it differently. Bill? I yeah. don't know. I, I, don't, I just can't, I, I, I want to think there's a cultural light, guys, but I don't think there is. No, I think it's just a, a, the fetish nature of the exercise industry. Yeah. I think it's just, it's turn. Yeah. The next thing. It's yeah. just its turn. Um, now, in the literature side of things, the pendulum has really swung towards high intensity and in finding out how brief yeah. and what the minimal effective dose is. So in the, in the scientific field, they're really swinging our way. And right. they've swung so far our way, I'm just waiting for the, <laughs> the back. backlash right. and the pendulum to swing right. in the other direction. Why all the hard... Um, I think a lot of it probably spawns out of CrossFit that's done a beautiful job of tapping into the the 30 to 40 year old yuppie mentality of Johnny Quest and you know being John, the best. They're not going to know what Johnny Quest is. No, uh, they're not. That can't be that. That can't, that, that can't be it. That can't be it. Uh, what's it, a, it's a, it's a, but just that whole you know I'm. The, this, you, you know, special you know, forces. The special, kind of guy. Yeah, I think right. special forces. Oh, right, now right, it's funny because right. you know Erwan right. Lacour with his with his movement out idea. I think he actually has something there as far as trying to change physical education yeah. in America or in anywhere for that matter. Because one of the things I picked up in graduate school is really interesting. Was this idea of not like you know being strong to be being good enough in your body to be useful in other things rather than just being a right. walking sculpture. Um, and actually, in the physical education literature, there's a backlash against like sports-based physical education because kids can opt out so early and they learn nothing about how to move. Yeah, they don't even learn the game because if they can get tagged out first thing, they're not comfortable in their body. They're a just out. Big movement in the '50s and '60s that was very much like move nat. Yeah. In elementary school physical education, I mean, I remember when I was in middle school, they even had a book about it called Toughen Up. <laughs> <laughs> and it was all these kids, you know, monkey bars and doing the human yeah. flag and all this That's cool. sort of stuff. <laughs> Um, Teaching the human flag to kids. Yeah. That's crazy. And um, that just gradually fell out of vogue, and now... Well, God, I can't imagine. I was talking, I mean, it was in, it was in you know, my talk earlier when I was saying how, you know, we're in a high stimulating, highly stimulating environment, and so these kids are always clicking the dopamine button. It's no surprise that boys sit in class and they just go, oh my God, it is so yeah. boring. Um, but I can remember, you know, 15 minutes, 15 minutes of recess, twice, a, you know, two, you had your lunch recess and you had right. like two intermittent, I was eight, nine years old, 15 minute recess. I go out, scream like a kid, run around, for, and I could sit for the next two hours and pay attention. Yeah. Like that was all it took. And it, it just, you know, I, I just, uh, hopefully it swings back in that other direction. Well, you know, when I was a kid, um, we had the president's physical fitness test twice a year. Mm -hmm. That yeah. still existed when I Does was really? in like, when I was in high school. Yeah, but I, I haven't heard anything of it now. They actually, in my kids' school, they had a presidential fitness award thing. Mm. Last year, they did away with it hmm. because it was you know encouraging competitivism and wasn't fair to the kids that weren't as athletic, and in turn, that was discouraging the less athletic kids from. Participate How do you tease of, out that data and be like, clearly it was the presidential yeah. fitness program that made this kid get a D in math, you know? there's no data there's to no it. Data. It's just a, you know, it's uh, just now a the, the political the, correctness gone wild. The uh, high schools in, in my town, part of their gym, they have exercise machines, cardio machines, so it is more fitness-based than sports-based. Mm -hmm. nice. um, but uh, it's just like it's just like corporate fitness, right? If the top guy is a fitness guy, they can justify the corporate fitness center. Right. If the th that guy top guy leaves and the accountants come in, it's gone. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's gone. What are we using the square footage for? Uh, uh get rid of it. Right. Yeah. So it's all, it's, it's, it's the top guy's you know uh, uh, preference, I guess. Well, you, you know, it, it's it's funny. Kind of, you, you even see that in places you think should have should actually be on board with this. Like we were as a as a company trying to get in with uh, St. David's a Hospital in, in in Austin there, and we're and we're trying. And they built this beautiful like two thousand square foot like fitness center for their 
for their people, kind of adjunctive to their McKinsey Physical Therapy Clinic, and the things like a cobwebs, like like nobody's <laughs> using it at the rate that that they thought it would be used. Yeah. And, it, and it's it always blows my mind how many times I'm driving across town and I drive past one of the hospitals and all the nurses are outside smoking. Oh yeah, just like a litany. And and then there and then there's the guy, of course, with who's who's drug his IV out too, and he's out there smoking. Yeah, <laughs> and it's just like. I don't know, one of the things that I came away with from my graduate education about health education is like, you can't just rationally present things to people. You can't just be like, here no, is the interpersonal, like, like D.A.R.E., D.A.R.E. to keep kids off drugs doesn't. Like drop the, drop the car from the crane, now I remember what I was gonna talk about. Here we go. Drop the car from the crane and it crashes, like this is what happens if you're, if you're high and you get in a car wreck and all the kids go, cool! Yeah. You know? <laughs> they, don't, they don't get excited, they don't get excited about that. And in health and fitness simultaneously, you have a whole slew of people who need it and they can't be reached rationally. They need like structural changes to their, to their lifestyle, or they need um, some amount of I mean, some amount of I'm going to say com community intervention is perhaps too strong a word, but facilitate being able to facilitate getting over some of those hurdle excuses like you're talking about in a marketing right. sense. But we in the fitness industry kind of have well, not we necessarily in this room, but the fitness industry in general they have the sort of highest shiniest fruit. I use this analogy. I go if you're under an apple tree and you're hungry. What do you do? You reach up and you grab an apple. But if you're in the fitness industry, what do you do? You try to climb to the top of the tree and get that apple. Like inherently it becomes this incredibly complex thing, overly complex thing, right out of the gate for so many people. And if they can start it, it's inherently unsustainable. They crash, they never go back. This is the New Year's resolution cycle. Well, and this is what we talked about eight years ago, 10 years or so yeah, ago, yeah. which was where, where hit, if it is a phenomenon, say, drop the ball was, by emphasizing how hard and how brutal the workout yeah. was and how Peaking big you're going to get and how efficient. <laughs> and, and, but that wasn't what the general public, that, that wasn't appealing to the general public. The general public would have found appealing half hour, once or twice a week. Right. Fine. That, you know, sure. you know, the real, the real basics, but the real, yes, yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah. The yeah. Early Norlis marketing, and I don't even know if it was marketing at the time, was, Look how efficient we made strength training so they have more time to go practice, go do your martial arts, go do your sports. And then somehow it got, it got turned into... You know, and it really seemed to succeed in spite of itself. Because I don't know if it was like this for the Nautilus Fitness Centers for you, like it was for me back in the mid-70s when they just yeah, blew yeah, yeah, up yeah. everywhere. But what you got from the community that was just clamoring, like standing yep. in line yep. in the morning to get in, yes, yes. <laughs> it was like a Nautilus Center was like Studio 54 or something. You know, it was like a right. big dude with a velvet rope just to get in kind <laughs> but of that, thing. But that was genuine though. That wasn't manufactured like nowadays. Right, but it, but it didn't come out of their marketing. It came in spite of their marketing. It was yes. just like, oh, yes, these yes, things yes, are yes. cool looking and it's right. different and all the, all the beautiful people are doing it, so everyone wants to do it. Which had nothing to do with their actual marketing approach. It just, right. it just happened, happened organically. Just happened. You think about how much Arthur made in spite of the fact he didn't like have like non-competes with the people buying his equipment or like, like the, 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 the Darden could talk more about this, but like he'd sell these lines of equipment and it was like the agreement was like two lines. It was like, yeah. uh, it, 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 it was a way, the, 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 the pe people could get out of it in, in a very reasonable way and go off and somehow not do the Nautilus method the Nautilus you know, that, method. That whole thing, I think, my opinion. Dr. Doug McGuff, who had a great talk today. To my left, Bill DeSimone, who's been uh, training people about as long as I've been alive. Yeah, as long as I've been, a, yeah, 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 and based on uh, talks yesterday. So what we're gonna do is uh, kind of a, as a point of interest, 10 years ago, roughly, What was the sticking point for so many people reading the book? Was it physics? Was it physiology? Well, you know, um, first it wasn't, so I'm not a professional writer. So this wasn't an assignment. I didn't have a market in mind. I had injured myself 
and this is me working out um, over really a four-year stretch, me working out what happened and discovering what I refer to as a disconnect between exercise and biomechanics. And, re and so basically I rebuilt my own process of working out. And then I realized from all my notes and sketches and diagrams, wait a minute, I have something here. But I didn't know what it was. Yeah. I didn't know if it was a commercial book. I didn't know if it was an academic book. So I just put it together and had it spiral bound because I yeah. didn't know any, you know. I remember getting that book. Yeah. And of all the ones you've written, that's my favorite one. Well, because when it came to me, it like has this little note scrawled on it. It's like, big and iron, blah, blah, blah. And mm -hmm. like, please read this. Tell me what you think. And I like, read it. I was like, holy shit. Well, it was so cool because you were living through your thought process. Right. You were thinking on paper, and I was like, one, <laughs> one exercise. Yeah. Yep. Uh, and, and I have a lot of stuff in the studio I have to do one. These, these things. Um, why do you think all of a sudden work, hard work is in vogue? <laughs> I mean, it, it's, just, it's just kind of brain sort of picking out a lot. Why all of a sudden in the turn of the 1800s with health food and then I'm forgetting the name of some of the guys in the late 1800s with these like full on, you're going to you know, be barefoot, you're going to be naked, you're going to be training. Yeah. Yeah. Bernard McFadden. Yeah, about right. Bernard yeah, McFadden, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's right, that's right, the lion. And so